What you have to do now, Art. After the fall from the balcony, we stop the camera and we pan into you lying on the floor, right? Just go ahead and shoot the scene. I'll be where I'm supposed to be. Okay. Now, Joe, those guys. <laughs> How do you like that guy, Joyce? I've only been in 70 Western movies. In every one of them, there's a scene like this. I don't think Mr. Haley would tell you anything if he wasn't sure there was a reason. You are a little unreliable, you know, Art. Despite what the kids think of you and those 70 Westerns. Well, I'm with friends. I can see that. All right, cut it out, Art. We want to shoot this scene. All right, you two up in the balcony. You start slugging, you wrestle, and both of you fall over the balcony, right? Right. All right. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. 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 All right, now. We can pick both of you guys up on the microphone to make this good and real. All right, let's make this. Sound? Sounds ready. Quiet, everybody. Roll them. Production number one, one, two, five, four. Scene six. Take it away. All Action. Right, All right, I'll tell you. There you go. 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 There well, that stunt man we've got doubling for you really can take falls, can he, Art? That's what he's paid to do, isn't it? Yeah, but everyone doesn't do what he gets paid to do around here. For instance, you're paid to act. Who's writing your dialogue, Ed? Bill Moore? Very funny. Hasn't he got enough trouble with the lines in this picture? This is the worst talk I've ever had to say. Well, I guess this is a typical Art Ingram picture, isn't it? You've griped about everything so far. Your story, your lines, your leading lady. Oh, you're not too bad. Thanks. Tell me, you do think your horse is all right? Sarcasm's catching around this place. What do you say, Ed? Let's get on with the next scene. All right, suits me. All right, places for next scene, everybody. Places. Places. I will run through it once and then shoot it. Let's try to make the first one a take. <laughs> uh, Joyce, look at the way those extras move when Ed yells at them. What a life. Yeah, what a life that double of mine leads. You realize, Joyce, that I was supposed to take that fall from the balcony. I realize it very well. You have no idea how I wish you had taken it. Maybe you wouldn't have gotten up. Partner, put down that six shooter, he said. Bill? Bill, are hmm? you busy? Oh, no, no. I'm I'm just banging on this typewriter to keep my fingers limber. What's up, Joycey? Oh, I just came off a set. I've been working with Art Ingram all morning, yeah. Are you really not busy, Bill? I'm doing some last-minute rewrites on tomorrow's <sighs> scene, Joyce. Art was complaining about his lines, and Ed wants to keep peace in the family, so little Billy goes to work. It can wait, though. Why do you ask? I'm not complaining, Bill, but I wish you'd write me some smart lines, some things that'll give me a chance to stand out. I've got all I can do to get my face in the camera when I work with Art. That bum knows more tricks than a monkey. You're not kidding. I'll do a rewrite on your lines for you, Joyce. Glad to do it. Oh, gee, that's swell. <laughs> Apparently, you don't like him either. What do you mean, either? I don't like him, but I didn't think there was any friction between you two. Well, there is. Tell me something, Bill. What reason do you have for hating Art? You really want to know? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you. I had a kid sister in college a couple of years ago. She was terrific. Pretty, had talent, was engaged to the campus hero. Had everything her own way. Mm. What college, Bill? Daniels University. Remember Joe Layton, All-American End? Well... Intercollegiate heavyweight champ, baseball and track star? Mm, I know the name. Well, that was the guy Mary was engaged to. And one day... Art Ingram went up to Daniel's U to shoot some scenes for a picture, and he met my sister. She didn't have sense enough to tell me she'd met him, but she fell all over herself, falling in love with the guy. She quit school, followed him back to the coast, and six months later committed suicide. Oh, no. Oh, huh? Yes, with oh. a capital Y. Someday Ingram and I are going to settle up about Mary. 
I promised myself that a long time ago. Bill, don't do anything about Art that'll get you in trouble. He isn't worth it. Believe me, he isn't. Don't worry, Joyce. When I do something about Art, it won't get me into any trouble. I guarantee that. Oh, keep those horses quiet, will you, fellas? We don't need them till the next scene. Now get them away so we don't pick them up on this microphone. That's good. All right, that's fine. Uh, Joyce, you know the action in this scene. I'm not in the first part of it. Huh? Art comes galloping up, rides in front of the camera, and then rides off. He's That's supposed it? to be chasing the bandits who have me. Fine, all right. One thing that guy can really do is ride. Mm. Quiet, everybody! Quiet! Quiet! Okay, let's make this. Sound. Sounds ready. Quiet, everybody. Roll them. Speed. Production number 11254, scene 7. Take it away. Action. <laughs> Holy mackerel, what a thing to happen to me. Ingram's been thrown. Come on, George. Yeah. All right, get back. Everybody, get back. I don't touch him. Nobody's touched him. Look at him. He's not moving. Come on, let us through there. Let All us right. through, will you? Ed. Yeah, he's lying pretty still. I'll see in a minute if he's hurt. Ed. Ba- All right, stand back. It's dead, Joyce. Oh. Looks to me like his neck's broken. Must have landed on it. Ed, look at his hand. What about it? When he rode past us a second ago, that big diamond ring of his was on his finger. I, I saw it. And so did I. You couldn't miss it. Hey, it's not there. And nobody touched the body before we got here. What happened to the ring, Ed? I don't know. All I know is what happened to Art Ingram. Like organ music, Vance? I like practically every kind of music, Markham. It's very restful. And so's your driving, by the way. For a district attorney, you drive very well. <laughs> How are a district attorney is supposed to drive? Oh, you know, full of fire and fury. <laughs> always in a hurry to get somewhere. Out of my day off, Vance, and not when accompanied by my favorite of private investigators. Well, thank you. Come to think of it, if I do drive a little faster, we'll make my apartment by dinner time. I have an appointment with Mrs. Markham, and I don't want to be late. Late, Markham. Nothing's either late or early. Time is a convenience that we humans decided upon to facilitate appointments or to make a schedule practical. I never make appointments and I live by no schedule, so time is relatively meaningless to me. Uh Your remark comes under the same category, my friend. We interrupt this organ concert to bring you a news report. Art Ingram, well-known movie cowboy, was killed in an accident this morning when his horse threw him. Vance, very unfortunate. Witnesses supply a fantastic angle to the accident. His director and co-star insist that when Ingram rode past the camera a few seconds before his death, a diamond ring was seen on his finger. When he was thrown, without ever being out of their sight, the ring was missing. We return you now to... Why turn off the radio, Vance? I thought you enjoyed the organ concert. There's one thing I enjoy more, Markham. Yes, and I know what it is. It's investigating murders. But apparently Art Ingram wasn't murdered. And if he was, you certainly have no way of knowing it. Haven't I? I think otherwise. Now, wait a minute, Vance. Don't tell me that just because that ring is missing, you think Ingram was murdered. The missing ring has nothing to do with it, Markham. They'll find the ring. It probably fell off Mr. Ingram's hand and is in the bushes somewhere. But something proves to me that man was murdered. Markham, your day off is herewith canceled. We're going to work. That's how it happened, Vance. Exactly how it happened. He rode past you and the camera, Miss Payne. Yes. He was leaning over the horse's neck as if to get more speed from him. Then he fell off a few seconds later and landed on his head. And, Vance, his neck was broken. That all makes sense. Not to me. Why don't you settle for being half right, Vance? They found the ring just as you said they would. It had fallen off Ingram's hand and was in the bushes at the side of the road. Why do you insist he was murdered? I'll explain that to you, Markham, but not now. Miss Payne. Yes? Did Mr. Ingram have any enemies in this troop? Why don't you ask me if he had any friends? That'd be easier to answer. I see what you mean. Are you included in the camp of the enemies? Ingram didn't bother me one way or another. All I can tell you is I didn't like him. But there is somebody here who hated him. Who's that? Bill Moore. He wrote the scenario for the picture we were shooting. 
Believe me, Vance, he had a reason for seeing Ingram dead. That automatically gives me a reason for seeing him. Markham. Of course, Vance. Mr. Moore, please. Yes? Thank you, Mr. Moore. Come right in here, if you will. Well? Hello, Mr. Moore. Hello. I understand you and Art Ingram didn't get on very well. Who told you that, Joyce? Well, it's true, isn't it? Just because it's true doesn't mean it has to be public property. Okay, Mr. Vance, I hated Art Ingram. What are you going to do about it? Well, I don't know at the moment, young man. But if you did anything about killing him, I promise you I'll do something about that. What am I going to do? I'm going to try and finish the picture, of course. What? No, no, no close-ups. I'll shoot all the scenes that Ingram was supposed to do with his double. That guy will have the most famous back and show business when I'm through. What? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, if there's any more trouble, I'll call you. So long. Uh, Mr. Mr. Haley, you're going to let me finish the picture? That's right, that's right, Wally. You're going to take Art's place. And we only need you for a couple of scenes. Oh, well, gosh, I'm not sure that I can do that, Mr. Haley. Okay, so you're not sure I am. It's very hard for me to remember more than one thing at a time, Mr. Haley. Yeah, 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 okay. Now, we'll shoot the scenes in pieces. Yeah, but I was... Don't sure. worry, will you, Wally? Haven't I got enough problems? With Vance and Markham and a couple of cops lousing up the studio and me trying to get a picture finished, am I going to have trouble with you, too? Oh, no, 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 sir, Mr. Haley, I don't give anybody any trouble, only I'm really a stuntman, not an actor. Yeah, I know, I know. Now, will you stop worrying? Leave that to me. Now, you'll be on a set ready to work at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, this is great. This is fine. I start out shooting a cowboy picture and I wind up making a murder mystery. <laughs> Vance, are you in there? Come in. Come in, Markham. I'm using the director's office for my own temporarily. I need some place to concentrate while I'm correlating my findings on this movie murder case. And what are your findings, Vance? Well, I've questioned everybody in sight, Markham. That includes the director, Ed Haley, Ingram's co-star, Joyce Payne, the writer, mm -hmm. Bill Moore, and Ingram's double, Wally Douglas. Uh -huh. But if I add up what I found out from all of them combined, I'd still have nothing. That Douglas interests me, though. Ingram's double? Mm-hmm. Is it your idea that he killed Ingram thinking he could take the star's place? Hardly. He's no actor and he knows it. He's an ex-pugilist, Markham. Was beaten up pretty badly in the ring, I understand. Of course, that's not unusual. Uh, Vance, let's understand each other. Both of us are working on this case. Neither of us, apparently, has made any headway. But you do know something that I don't. So let's start from there, shall we? You want to know how I knew it was murder. Is that it, Markham? It most certainly is. Well, that's reasonably simple. How many Art Ingram pictures have you seen? Oh, few, I guess. I don't know actually why. You remember the scenes where he rides horseback? Of course, he was an excellent rider. Oh, now I get it. You've built a whole murder theory on the premise that a rider as good as Ingram wouldn't slip off his horse. <laughs> now, Vance... That reproachful tone would be used correctly if that was what I built my theory on. But it isn't, Markham. I've seen a dozen Ingram pictures. In every one of them, he rode horseback, and in every one of them, he wore gloves when he rode. That's not unusual. Most cowboy stars, maybe all of them, wear gloves when they're riding. That is exactly why I knew Ingram was murdered. His director and co-star saw the ring on his finger when he rode past them, remember? Oh, uh, If yes. the ring was seen on his finger, he couldn't have been wearing gloves. Yet he always wore gloves when he got on a horse. Now, what's the answer, Markham? Oh. Oh, he didn't get on the horse. He was put on after he was dead. You're right. His killer figured out a way to make it look like an accident. Now I've got to think of a way to figure out the killer. This is District Attorney Markham. The movie murder case began when Art Ingram, cowboy star, was thrown from his horse but Philo Vance reasoned that what looked like an accident was actually murder. Suspects include Ingram's director, his co-star, and a scriptwriter, Bill Moore, although Vance finds Wally Douglas, stuntman, an interesting character. In an effort to finish the picture, director Ed Haley is shooting an outdoor scene with Wally Douglas acting as Ingram. And Vance and I are interested spectators. It is the power You'll be interested in this, Markham, Vance. Now, in a scene, the hero rides right past us. He doesn't know the bridge up ahead is washed out, and he's heading for sure destruction when the heroine, that's Joyce, the heroine rides up in back of him and lassos him. 
While both of them are riding at top speed? Well, in a Western movie, nobody ever rides any other way. <laughs> now, we've rehearsed this scene several times, and we're ready to shoot it. Miss Payne actually lassos Wally Douglas. Oh, yes, yeah, she's very good with the rope. You watch and see. Okay, here we go, everybody. Miss Payne, ready? Ready. Wally Douglas? Okay. All right, let's make this. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. 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 No sound. Quiet, everybody. Roll them. Production number one, one, two, five, four, C, seven. I got wait. Action. All right, boy, come on. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Okay, Joyce, now throw that lasso. Throw it. Throw it. All right, cut. Cut. All right, that's it. Print that one. We'll dub in the sound later. That young lady is very good with the rope, isn't she, Mr. Haley? Joyce, she's sensational. Terrific. Why? Yes, Vance, why? No reason. Must there be a reason for everything I say, Markham? No, but there generally is, isn't there? <laughs> Joyce? Bill, what are you doing in my dressing room? I'm here to take care of you, Joyce. That's what I'm here for. I didn't have a chance before this to really show you how I feel about you telling Vance about me and Art Ingram. He'd have found out anyhow, Billy. Vance would have found a way of... of... But... That's nothing to what I'm going to do to you, kid. Maybe this will teach you to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't get away with slapping me, you two-bit no talent. My God, hair. You think... Let go of my you hair. Teach you teach me where you are. I'll show you Somebody's what at the door. To you. Let's quit this quick. Uh, who, who's there? It's I, Philo Vance. May I come in? Come on. Oh, uh, hi, Vance. Joyce and I were just running over a scene. Yes, I heard part of it from outside. Scene is quite the word. You, uh, want to know what happened in here, don't you, Vance? I'd hate to think I couldn't guess. Actually, I came looking for you, Mr. Moore. I've just found out the reason you hated Art Ingram. You found out about my sister? That's right. I could have saved you a lot of trouble, Vance. After the way this guy busted in on me, believe me, I'd have told you all the details myself. Your sister was very young, very pretty, engaged to the campus hero. Four-letter man, is that right, Moore? That's right. She killed herself a few months after she left college to follow the late Mr. Ingram. You didn't want me to know about that, did you, Moore? No, but not for any reason that you think. I didn't want you to know because I didn't want that story dragged out again. Is that wrong? Not if that was the reason. I told you it was. Miss Payne. Yes? I watched you lasso Mr. Ingram's double this morning. You're quite strong. What about it? Well, somebody, whoever killed Ingram, had to boost him up to his saddle after he was dead. To tell you the truth, I didn't suspect you at first because you're a girl. Well? To continue telling you the truth, that fact doesn't continue to keep you off my list of suspects. Sit here next to me on this crane, Vance. And when we begin shooting, it'll swing up and out and come right over the action. This is very interesting, Mr. Haley. Thank you very much. What happens in this scene? Well, it's a mountain cabin, see? Now, the hero walks in, finds one of the cattle rustlers guarding the girl, and knocks him out. We'll use Wally Douglas, of course, but he's been instructed to keep his back to the camera. I hope he can remember a simple thing like that. Douglas has approximately the same build as the late Mr. Ingram. Just about. Okay, everybody. Quiet. Quiet. Okay, let's make this. Sound. Sounds ready. Quiet, everybody. Roll them. Speed. Production 11254, scene 47. Take it away. Action. So. Look out, Art. He's got a gun. Uh, well, if he has, he won't get a chance to use it. I... Oh. Thank goodness you got here, darling. Please put your arms around me. You deserve it, you know. After all, you were the victor. The victor? Well, to, to the victor? Uh, victor over the verdant field. Cut! Cut! Hold it, everybody! What was wrong, Mr. Haley? You'll hear in a second, Vance. Oh, Wally. Wally Douglas. Your line is supposed to be, to the victor belongs the spoils. What happened to it, Wally? Oh, gosh. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Haley. I, I, I just couldn't remember it. Oh, where'd you get the line you did remember? I, I don't know. It just came to me. Well, tell it to go away and not come around anymore. We don't want it. Yes, sir. All right. Let's make the whole scene over again. Places, everybody. Oh, Wally. Yes, Mr. Haley. Will you please remember your lines and keep your back to the camera? Okay. 
All right, everybody. Uh, yo, Pete, get off the floor. Well, I have to take another poke in the jaw from Wally. He hits like a mule. Well, fake that punch, will you, Wally? You almost broke Pete's jaw. I'm sorry, Mr. Haley. I forget things. Yeah, yeah, I know. Places, everybody. Places, everybody. All right, let's do this again. Make it right this time. Uh, excuse me, please, Mr. Haley, but do you mind if I leave? Why, no, no, not at all. Uh, this is getting boring, Vance. On the contrary, it's very interesting. In fact, I might almost say revealing. <laughs> You might at least tell me what you're looking up, Vance. I will in a moment, Markham. Ah, here it is. The quotation is from Pope. Victor over the verdant field. Hmm. Whatever that means. It means a great deal to me, Markham. And it's going to mean a great deal more, I believe, after I make a long-distance phone call. Listen and listen close. Huh? I know it's 3.30 in the morning, but I couldn't call before because I've been watched. I know you killed Art Ingram, huh? but I hated him too. Hated him enough to give you a chance to get away. You see, Philo Vance knows you killed Art. Huh? Don't ask me how. He knows it, that's all. There's a train out of here at 5 o'clock that gives you an hour and a half to get packed, blow, and remember me in your dreams. But you... So long. How did I do, Vance? Very well, Miss Payne, very well. You see, I'm quite certain that you just spoke to Mr. Ingram's murderer. Now, Mr. Markham and I are going to get the proof we need. You know, I haven't been up this late or this early in years, Vance. It is almost 4.30 in the morning, isn't it, Markham? And our man hasn't shown up yet. The train should be here in a few minutes, and so should he. In fact, look. Events. It's very dark, Markham, but isn't that a shadow over there by the station platform? I don't see... Oh, yes, yes, it is. It is, Vance. It's a man. It's more than a man, Markham. It's our man. Better get in back of him in case there's trouble. Got a gun, Markham? Yes. Keep it handy. I'm going right up to him. Hello there. Huh? Going somewhere? Oh. Oh, it's you, Vance. Oh, so the tip was straight. You did know it was me, didn't you? Well, you're a sucker for trying to take me, Vance, because I'm going to... Boo! <laughs> I'm glad you did that, Markham. Very happy indeed that you knocked him out. If I hadn't, he most certainly would have knocked you out, Vance. He was just about to. And now, if I'm not too inquisitive, uh, who is he? Use your flashlight, Markham. I know you'll want to get a look at our murdering friend. I don't have my flashlight, and it's too dark to see. In that case, I'll enlighten you. The murderer of Art Ingram, Markham, was his own double, Wally Douglas. <laughs> You know, Markham, I've never done anything quite like this before. You mean sitting in a private projection room and seeing yourself on the screen? That's right. I asked you to have a film and recording made of your explanation of the movie murder case so that we'd have it for our home, Vance. Mrs. Markham and I have a new 16-millimeter projector, and Mr. Haley practically begged to be allowed to shoot this for us. I'll know whether I'm indebted to him or not as soon as I see what I look like <laughs> and hear what I sound like. Yeah, please don't forget I'm in the picture, too. Vance. Ready to begin any time, Mr. Vance. Well, that might as well be now. Good enough. Lights out. Here we go. Markham, you wanted to know why Wally Douglas killed Art Ingram and how I knew it was he who had done it. That's right, man. Isn't... Well, to begin with, I was watching a fight scene being photographed when I saw Mr. Douglas knock out one of the actors with a powerful right hand. Oh, that's the beginning. His entire appearance indicated he had been a professional fighter, and that blow proved it. That still doesn't tie him up with the Ingram murder. No, but he made a curious speech when he had knocked out the man. He said something about the victor and verdant fields. I remember when that puzzled me. That was a very learned quotation to be used by an ex-pug. In fact, I had to look it up to find that it was written by Alexander Pope. That suggested to you, then, that Wally the Douglas, the double, had been no? well-educated. Oh, no, Reasonably well, at any rate. There was no question but that the beatings he had taken in the prize ring had affected his mind a bit. Pathetic but character. it still functioned to an extent where he remembered certain incidents and lines from his past. Uh, that long-distance phone call you made. Oh, that really what was it made to? You know, really? Daniels University. I wanted a description of the four-letter athlete who had been the fiancé of the girl who killed herself over Ingram. You mean the you sister of Bill Moore, the writer? <laughs> I Correct. Wonder. I got the description, Markham, and also found that the fiancé had majored in English. 
and that Alexander Pope was one of his favorite authors. It seems that after his fiancée's death, he left college, went into the ring, and quit after absorbing terrific punishment. After that, he lived only to get revenge on the man who took the girl he loved from him. That's it, Mr. Vance. You figured out his murder scheme, Vance, just because he forgot to put gloves on Ingram's hands before boosting him onto his horse. That was the beginning of our activities, Markham. And now, this is the end of the movie murder case.